Hello, I'm Tip Squirrel from tipsquirrel.com. In this video, we'll be looking at problems with the warp tool and, of course, how to overcome them. So, what problems am I talking about? Well, let me show you what I was after. I'm going to skip over to our first document here called Warp End. And you can see at the top of this image, which is of Peterborough Cathedral, by the way, uh, I've folded over the top of the photograph. Now, what I was actually looking to do was to kind of roll it up, which I eventually ended up doing. But I had to first of all start with this first curl. So it sounds pretty easy. Let me just zoom in so you can see what I've done here. It seems pretty easy, but in fact, there's a couple of problems along the way. So that's what we'll be looking at here. Okay, let's skip over to my other image, which is where we're going to start. Now, first of all, I'm going to need to add a little bit of space around the image so we can add our curl. I'm just going to go up to image and then canvas size and add a 10%, so 110% there to the width, just so we've got some working room. Okay, now the first problem that we have with the warp tool is how much of the image it actually uh, affects. So let's take a look at that. I'm going to go Control T, which is the way I prefer to go into warp. I can Control T and then just right click and go on to warp. And you can see that we've got some handles around the outside plus some of these uh, little circles and what these circles are a part of a handle if you've worked with the bezier curves or the pen tool you'll know all about these if i move them around you can see that we are adding a little bit of a curve in there well that's not what we want to do here we just want to bend it down so if i take this top anchor point here and start bringing that down you can see it takes quite a while for it to make any kind of fold or bend curl at all on the image and that's really not what we're after because it's affecting the whole image we can't put any anchor points in so we can tell it no stop here like we can with the puppet warp tool so there's an easy way out of that let's escape from there just to take us back and what I'm going to do is I'm going to first of all add a new guide at about 10 percent you can see I'm already working in percentages everything that I do is in percentages at the moment uh, my rulers are in percentages and you can change that from your preferences more of that some other time we have covered that in previous videos so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a 10 in there and it's a horizontal guide that I want click OK and there's the guide next I'm going to make sure that I've got snap ticked which it is and I'm going to take my rectangular marquee tool and just make a selection of that top 10% you can see because I've got snap on it snaps to the guide quite nicely so there we go now I need a copy of that on its own layer so we can warp just that and the easy way to do that is to cut and paste it because we don't want it to be on the underlying layer at all anyway now I am working on a copy of this image of course if I make any mistakes I can always go back to my original image in this particular case I am going to start destroying my background image because like I say, I'm working on a copy of it anyway. Okay, so like many things in uh, on your computer, there are shortcut keys for copy, cut, and paste, and they work the same in Photoshop. So I'm gonna control X to cut, and you can see it disappears. Now control V is traditionally paste, and no different here in Photoshop. And if I control V, it's paste it back into the middle of the document well that's no good to me here I wanted it back where it was so let's control Z or control Z uh, if you're in the States just to go back on that and now I'm going to push control and shift and V and you can see it pops it back in where it was cut from but on its own layer it's gone on to my layers palette as layer number one okay that's all very good let's actually while I think about it let's change that just make it top there we go then we know where we're working at let's clear the guides out of the way so they're not in our way clear the guides okay I'm going to just quickly zoom in so as we can see where we're working I'll use the spacebar to um, invoke the hand so as I can move it to where we're working Okay, let's try and warp that now. Control T and then right click and warp. 
and we're working with a much smaller area now and if I bring this down you can see my curl starts to take effect much easier and better as we'd like it but here's the next problem and that is it's warping in front and I wanted it to warp behind but you can see as the top of the arch comes in there it's, it's actually in front maybe this isn't the best image to to practice on because the top left hand corner is all sort of that brownie color but you can see it's going in front of the image and we don't want that so what if we do it from the bottom maybe that would help nope still goes to the front what and if we go over to the right hand side we can try there now to the front and to the front so I'm just going to press escape just to get us back to where we were and now I'm going to try something a little bit different let's go control T and now let's flip that vertically now let's warp now it's upside down but let's try the warp you'll see where I'm going with this in just a second if I take my top handle now and bring that down you can see it's going behind which is no good to us whatsoever because obviously the top of this image is upside down now so let's try the bottom one as well and you can see it is going behind skip over to the right hand side and you're probably ahead of me here but if we take the right hand side you can see that it's bending behind our image now this logically is all we need to do is just to curl it here surely and then flip it back the way it was that's what logic tells us and it works fine no problem at all however uh, it's not great because you can't see where you're working so you can't tell here how that looks in relation to the bottom part of our image so although this works it's not ideal so we need to find a way to overcome that little problem and in fact <laughs> we just have to try and uh, outsmart Photoshop let me show you what I mean by that I'm gonna press escape to get back to where we were okay so if the image is upside down then Photoshop will go oh you want to go behind that's fine so let's let's fool it control T and then let's go flip vertical to turn it upside down now I'm gonna press enter so now the bottom becomes the top and the top becomes the bottom as far as Photoshop's concerned. So when I control T and then flip vertical and then right click and warp, as far as Photoshop's concerned, that image is now upside down. But it to us, of course, it's back the way it should be. So now we have our warp going behind and we can see our curl in relation to the rest of the image and that's a lot easier okay let me just bring that down to about where I want it which is about there now I'm going to take this handle here and make it straight up for this particular image just to keep things nice and easy really and I'm going to bring down a guide I just clicked in the ruler there and while I've still got the mouse button held down I drag onto the workspace and I can just add a, uh, a guide there just so as I can see where I'm working okay now this handle here is sticking up and that's controlling the angle of the top of the image here so let's bring that one down I'll try and bring it down as straight as I can and onto that guide just so it keeps it level now you may want to bow this in a little bit this image it doesn't suit bowing in because I've reduced it in size for this particular um, screencast it gets a bit jaggy if I try and make it rounded at the top so we're going to keep it nice and straight I'm going to bring this one down this handle down to roughly where the one is on the other side bring this handle in so as we get that nice curve on the right hand side and then this one again controls the other half of the top and we can bring that one down and pop it just there now I press enter and now we have our curl on the top of our page so let's go and hide the or clear the guide zoom in and have a look at how we got on and there we go so we've managed to curl it over the top now in my first image that I showed you of what I wanted to do there's a few more shades and highlights in there you can see I haven't quite got it level and it's a bit jaggy 
as I was saying. Uh, but anyway, so I've added some highlights and some shadows, and that'll be the subject of my next video here at tipsquirrel.com. Thank you very much for bearing with me. I hope this helps. Have a play. If you've got any questions, don't fear to let me know, either via email, blog at tipsquirrel.com, or maybe even on Twitter, you can find me at tipsquirrel. Thanks very much for watching. See you again very soon.